To the next man, we got the man himself. He's headlining December 2nd in Atlanta, mm -hmm. man. Night of Champions. Ranked number 12 by the WBA. Crack top 15. What's happening with y'all, man? We coming right, with time, it. Is my camera straight for y'all? Is it, is it good like this for you guys? If yeah, I keep like yeah, okay, cool. Just like that. All right. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, Greg. I got a little excited. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. He said, no. We got Chad, the man, Thompson, man. What's going on, brother? Everything's great, bro. Everything's great. Like, like I can't, I can't lie. You know, I'm happy. I'm in a blessed place. You know, it's funny. I was just reflecting on my, my journey up until this uh, particular point. You know, like I was saying, like I had six fights in four and a half years, and then you know, always questioning and wondering why. You know, but I can't lie. I also became closer to God and, and the Lord Jesus, um, in this last year as well. In his last couple of months, more, more, uh, so to say. But uh, when I looked at it, it's like I had six fights in four and a half years. Then my next six fights where I was on Showtime, I mean, Showtime, now playing ESPN, and main eventing, and I, and I have two titles, you know? So, because I was supposed to have the belt, the NABF, the NABF but when, I, uh, when I was in Colombia, um, Panama, but they didn't have the belt there. So, I'm going to pick it up when I get to, to Atlanta. So, I have both. Um, that's what put, put me top 13 in the world for the WBA. Okay, so what yeah, was it? Know. International title or continental? Which one is it that you just picked? I, I, I'm not I'm not sure which which NAB uh NABA it, it is, but um I'm gonna have to see when I get there. Okay, okay. But all I know is right at the end of the day, I'm looking I'm looking at like just a key in the door because the real best that I want are the, the world titles. So anything I collect, if it means something, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel good about that. You know what <clears> I mean? Yeah, man. So like listen, like how's training going? Um, and what's the plan, man? What's the plan going forward after December second? Not to go past it, but um, yeah, what's the plans well, in the immediate future. Chris is my promoter told me because we literally just fought and then went back to Montreal, mm -hmm. and I took a week off, and then since this fight was on ESPN, a promoter he really wanted it, and me and my brother really wanted it as well. So we are already in shape. We he saw me say I'm gonna send you to Vegas real quick, and so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, to finish just you know the month and a half strong and go back to Atlanta and finish the fight. He's telling me that we'll probably have a little break after this, just to you know regroup and see what's going on moving forward. But I can't lie, the training camp has been nothing but I'm I, I always I'm a, you know I'm a philosoph philosophical spiritual you know deep person. Every time I go through training camp, I I always grow as a as a as a human being and as a person as well. So which makes me feel comfortable going into the fight because I start to learn more about myself. And this fight was very um. Uh, this training camp has been very like mental for me more than anything because I I'm not gonna say no names on online because I don't want to speak about any of the names that I've been some of the guys I've been working with. But when I got to uh when I got to so we get to top rank we are sparring on top rank and the gym's full. But I can't lie, like America is very different than Canada when it comes to boxing. Like, I mean, <laughs> can you can can you tell us? Cause you know we be talking that shit. They like, oh y'all don't know what the fuck you talking about. Oh. Okay, you figure it out when you get there. I already know what we're talking about, man. Bro, Go ahead. <laughs> bro, it's not that Canadians can't compete with Americans. It's that by the time an American, a Canadian meets an American in a fight, he's not used to what that guy is bringing. Right. You know what I mean? Because when I went to the gym, I can't lie. I, it's like I had to. I, I wasn't intimidated, but it's like when I'm looking at what I'm looking and hearing the sound of the punches on the bag. The sound of the punching and the sparring. You're the like, look God. in everyone's demeanor. Mm. Bruh. <laughs> everyone's a killer here, bruh. <laughs> Everyone. Yo, I just stepped into the, the, the ocean. Like, he's just shocking, Bro. man. Big fish. So the first day, the first day we were sparring, it kind of caught me off a little hold bit. On, I was sparring with the dude. On. Hold on, hold on. Before you get into that particular part right there, it, it's amazing you say that because... It's to me, it's really the structure. The structure. Yo. I always said Canadian boxing, we need teachers of how to throw these punches properly. We need really we need that, teachers. We don't need coaches need and teachers. teachers to really build the structure. Cause y'all really fine. Like I'm telling you, when mm -hmm. you do like boots, for example, Earl Yo. W, who Naturally, he could be fighting at 160 right now. He's making 47. Bro, when you do the yeah. same day weighing and you think, oh, you're making weight, 
and you look across the ring and you got Godzilla looking across the ring at you, bro. <laughs> you second guess, you start to second guess life. Yeah. You think it's a joke. Bro. All right. Bro. All right, fuck around. You think it's a joke. All right. I'm telling you, bro. It's no, it, it's, it, it's, 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 I don't think, I, if you don't, if you're not training in the States, the chances of becoming world champion as a male, dog. If you're not, if you're not experiencing that type of work, at least, I would say, four months out of a year just to keep yourself mentally aware of what the fuck is really going on out there. You're, you're in for trouble. Cause you really, if it's, that's what I'm saying. It's more, it's not that guys cannot adapt and handle this. It's just that it's brand new to them fight day. And that's the right. thing. You don't want this. You don't want this, this level to be brand new to you on fight day. That's the problem because when I went to go spar, okay. So I'm used to sparring in Canada and like, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I have some rough days and my rough days weren't even close to this day. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even close. So the first day I get there, all I could say, imagine like this, my, it's like it was overwhelming for the first sparring day because it felt like to me, imagine you going on a construction work site and then someone gives you a jackhammer to hold and you hold it and it's shaking you and you let go of it for a second. I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. The second time you hold it, you might be a little prepared or you might be scared to hold it. You know what I'm saying? Me, I was prepared going in a second time because it's like, these guys don't spar, bro. They fight, especially at top rank, because yeah. every you never know who's in the gym. Everyone's fighting for an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You, it, it's like a sparring could be an opportunity. In Canada, sparring is just a sparring. There's no one in the gym that's going to sign you or no one in the gym that's going to you know promote you because of what you just did. In the gym, in, in the States, it's like, yo, so someone could be there that's going to give you an opportunity. So second day I go there. Yeah, hold on, Greg. You know why I love this? Because I remember when we first started talking to Shannon, Trevor. To yeah. hear her talk now, you you <laughs> you can you can hear the growth. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Because I'm fucking these guys now. They're like, oh yeah, all right, bro. So he second day, yeah. So Friday, so I the same dude that's the same dude that gave me the work on Wednesday. I'm like, yo, yo. I'm like, when you when you back? Because me, I don't really play that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that guy who's gonna be like, oh damn, it's too much. It's like, nah, this is where the sharks at. All right, I'm, I know I'm bringing my I'm, next time. I'm coming with the sword, the sword. I'm coming with the straps. I'm coming mm -hmm. with you know what I'm saying. Mentally, I know I'll go on now. So I said, you're here. I'm like, you're here on Friday. He's like, yeah. All right, cool. So I get there, but what was beautiful about it is because because how you know the the work he gave me on Wednesday, it wasn't so much that he was he was too much for me. It's just that it was overwhelming. But he got the he got a misunderstanding of who I was. So Friday, third round now. It's it, it, the now when I step in the ring Friday, it ain't the same on Wednesday because I'm I'm approaching it differently. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm approaching the sparring differently because these guys will hurt you if you're not. You better wake the fuck up. <laughs> like I know I'm strong. I know I'm built for it. This you so, think it's, it's a game? Listen, man. I'm I telling you, bro. It's not a game, bro. It's not a game. Boxing, right. boxing, box. My. Yo, everything is baby food. Every, everything with this was baby food. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Friday, we get in, I get in the ring with the guys Friday. Yo, but now he's, the, the guy he sees I'm not going on at a third round. Yo, the man starts talking. He's talking shit. So I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm like, fuck you, bro. Like, what do you think this is type thing? I don't give a fuck, bro. So mm -hmm. his corner is talking shit. Chris is talking shit. Bro, now at this point, everyone is around the ring, bro. How you think, how you think yeah. Roly and them, how you, yo, they Yo. just, do you know how much brawls be happening in gyms through sparring me? Yep. Like, uh, real life brawl. Like, you got to have uh, some OGs in there to no. be like, Yo, that shit ain't going down today. Exactly, exactly. Because when we were talking, we were talking, then when we finish, some this old man, some, I forget it. I wish I forget it. I remember his name. You guys probably would have known him. It wasn't Stitch, but some other famous cut man, you know, he used to work with, he worked with Floyd, he worked with Pacquiao. Right away, he came up to me. He's like, yo, he's like, on Friday, he, he, on Friday he's like, yo, you just crazy rounds with the best guy in the gym he's he's 18 and 0 off record i'll tell you guys his name you know off record but um he's like you want he's like you went to the gym with the best guy in the gym then he's like are you signed but as a joke i'm like i'm like yeah i'm signed why are you trying to sign me to, to top rank he's like oh he's like he's like i can do anything but after he saw what i did he was impressed and wanted to work with me so then boom yo your wi-fi is kicking your behind right now the story sounded good, but your Wi-Fi beating you up. <laughs> Look at that body shot. He in the gray screen right now. Gray screen. Yeah. It's that camp. Yeah, it's a back of it. It's that camp house Wi-Fi. 
Yeah, Cedric, Cedric's, Cedric's keeping me hungry, bro. <laughs> it's keeping me hungry, bro. I gotta sometimes, like, you know, hold it, like, <laughs> bro. All this to say, bro. So wait, long. So after we sparred that day, we sparred another day, and then we sparred this cube Monday. We, who, 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 he looked like he looked like Al Pacino's. He looked like Al Pacino's grandson, bro. Mean on his face, straight from Cuba. <laughs> Couldn't even speak a word of English. Power puncher. But me and Chris, we were working on some things on uh on the on the the day before Wednesday. So basically, he, what we we applied that in sparring, and I had a great sparring. I'm telling you guys right now. Mm-hmm. When you guys see me fight my next fight, you're gonna be like, "Holy fuck, Chan's different. He's different." Right away, it's gonna be evident that I'm. It's like, you know, sometimes I always say it's not about sometimes. It's not so much. It's not always about who you fight, but sometimes how you win. When 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 a guy see Boots when he was coming up, Boots wasn't fighting anyone super serious, but the way he was winning, you were like, "Whoa, this guy's dangerous." Just by just by the way he's winning. Mm-hmm. When you guys see me fight, come fight time, I'll be disappointed if I don't. If everyone isn't shocked by my performance, I'll be disappointed no matter what. Because the way that I'm punching now, it's hard for me. When just like I, I'm not trying to praise myself too much, but even with me and Chris have been working lately, because I'm a big critic myself. But me and Chris have been working, and Chris has been working with me for so long. But the way Chris, what he has to stop and admire the way that I'm punching now. Because he's just like, he, he himself is like, whoa, Chan. Like, I felt like I was asleep my whole life. <laughs> and now that that it's like that I've that that that, that this has the, this 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 technique and this stop this development has changed within myself. I can't wait for sh- fight time. I can't wait to, to display what I'm what I'm gonna show on this. Cause now it's like also too, I I I I understood seeing the griminess in, in boxing and seeing how everyone was, that mental switch. Plus the elements that Chris have given me, the combination of both has been a has has has, has like I said, transformed into something. You know? And fight people don't see that. But I'm telling you, man, it's di- it's different out here. Though. Greg, <laughs> I turn into a monster, bro. Greg, what is my what is what was my saying? I always say when it comes to the boxing, with inside and outside of the ring. What? How the business is dirty? Boxing is more of a hurt business. Outside of the ring than it is inside of the ring. Y'all stop mm-hmm. playing. If your team ain't together, if your team Yo. ain't right, you're going to get done dirty in boxing. Yeah. Remember 100%. I tell you that. And it's not, only your, it's not only your management team. I'm talking about your personal team. Better Yo. be on shit or it's y'all yeah. going to find out real quick when you go to the big dogs. Because you feel good right now, but when you go to the big dogs, man. <laughs> That's a, I'm telling you, a lot of, a a lot of Canadian... A lot of Canadian fighters, I'm telling you, it's the what it is that they're facing is deception. Like that's what I when I went to top rank and I sparred those guys, and I saw those guys do what they were doing on the even like I said the sound, the punches on the bag sound different. You know what I'm telling you? When I yeah. when I when I was when I was witnessing all of this, I'm like, bro, Canada is a deception. People see people win in Canada, like, yeah, he's winning. It's because you don't really know what the fuck is. Or up. nah, yeah, he's a pro fighter, but. Like you don't really, like I don't like big fish in a small <laughs> pond, man. You're yeah. a pro fighter, like you. You happy that you're like people out here really taking like taking lives, you know? Like dudes are really out oh. here hurting people for real. Like it's that's the real I'm hurt saying. business. It ain't no joke. That's what I'm that's like what it's I'm a real hurt business. Exactly. Really get hurt. Yeah. So exactly. Sparring, sparring. You don't even make it to fight night. People be getting Yo, hurt. Me. That's sort of and that's ex- I can't even stress it enough, bro. It's that exactly it. These dudes who are doing it for real and they're about it for real, the champion, everyone within that top 10, top 15, you know, the hungry dudes working their way up that are in it for real, that are out here for real, mm. bro. It's like waking up to that was the this, having this uh, like awakening for myself and realization mentally. And then having, again, the teacher like Chris beside me because back chris he's always on his game chris is a beast he's like yo this and this you need to do because never a, it was never a question of if i'm strong enough like i put in the work he knows that but he's like chan he's like you up here gotta get right and it's like i had that conversation with myself and i turned on the switch and then he gave me he gave me the information and that turned me into something 
So mm-hmm. now it's like, now for myself, I proved it to myself that I know uh, once again that I become world champion. Because after that first spying that I had on Wednesday that woke me up, I can't lie to you guys. I was questioning myself. I'm like, damn, dog. I, I, it, was, but it, was, it was bothering me. That's why I had to like, I had to find it in me to, uh, to, to unlock that thing that said, nah, dog, you are by the way and show these boys and get the respect. Like, prove it to yourself at this point. Because sparring with them, I'm like, it, it, it's like I said, it's no joke. Boxing is not a joke. Everyone's winning. Everyone in Canada's winning, and ah, we're winning. But it's like, yo, we ain't winning, bro. You're just pr- prolonging the inevitable. Have That's you, what you're doing. Not noticed, and I'm gonna be honest. For those from Ontario, mm. Ontario fighters, yeah, outside of the man himself, the Canadian kid, Steve Molitor. Outside of Steve Molitor, yeah. Mm-hmm. In Ontario boxing, yeah, everybody that stepped up to world mm-hmm. level. Has been KO'd, man. If not, damn That's it. what I'm telling you. Yeah. Let's yeah. keep it a thousand. That's what I'm telling you. We're talking about Quebec. No, it's true. We're talking about on t- Let's stop playing. Yeah. That bro. Even Quebec, even Quebec, because only a few guys from Quebec made it. Only a few, like you know what I'm saying? Like only a few made it. That's why I'm so happy. My promoter, he do, he's really putting me in the right environment to make sure that I'm ready. Because, like I said, like. If that if that was my first experience, let's say I was fight night and and like see my sparring that I had, if that was my first experience, it wouldn't have went well. Because like let's say mentally, I'm not I'm not. The, it's like my mind is scarred now to the to the truth of boxing, which is which gave me the strength and awareness to move forward correctly. You know what I'm saying? Now now I'm ready for whatever situation because I felt it. I was scarred mentally. Now I'm telling you. I'm going to bring up a conversation we had when we first spoke. It'll make sense to you now. When I said that you got to bring Canadian boxing with you, Greg, this is what I mean. What I mean by bring Canadian boxing is don't just take what you know and stay over there in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And rebuild the infrastructure here. Yes, yes, yes. See, a lot of people, they go and they don't come back. They're like, ah, fuck Canadian boxing. Like, fuck everybody. No, exactly. But Mm. that's what I meant. But it it wouldn't convince you at the time because you'd had to go through a few things to kind of understand. Like, Mm -hmm. you have to go to the big stage. That's not even question. To yeah, do what you have to see. As long you as you just put mm. on your back, you know what I'm saying? Put the, yeah. you know what I mean, on your back and ride with shit. Exactly, not- exactly. Exactly. So now that I, it's like for, for me, if I were to let's say if I were to train anyone young myself, mm. anyone that would come under me would be prepared for anyone in the world. Because that's why I like Chris in a sense too, because it's not just that I went there, I was overwhelmed and he didn't know what to tell me. Chris was like, bruh. Like, he sat down with me and he was like, you know, first day he was like, yo, dog, like, you, you, you talk, 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 talk about changing, you know, big dreams and big dreams. But he's like, this is what it is. And so when after talking to him, I sat down to myself and I had that calm, that personal, honest conversation with myself. Honest. You know what I mean? Honest conversation with myself. And then the next part, I proved it to myself. You know what I'm saying? That, and everyone in there that it was like, bruh. Thompson is like, yo, he's the real deal to stay, bro, at the top. You know what I'm saying? And I and I just made the adjustments, and that showed me that it's like, shit, I am, I it, I do have it. You know what I'm saying? I do have it. But nonetheless, if you're in Canada and you don't experience this, and you don't come here to see what the griminess is mm. and the truth of what boxing really is, bro, you're in for a surprise. Come fight night, bro. You better make sure that you come out here for and get your fucking head kicked in just once to at least understand that like okay like do i do i have what it takes to make the adjustments i'm not saying you gotta stay out here but you have to understand do you have what it takes to make the adjustments to be on this level and chill here because the work that i've been mm. putting in right now mm. and the work that i'm going to be putting in moving forward it's like yo there's certain things that i, I, I cut out of my life automatically because like it's like bro to be champion i don't got time for that because these motherfuckers here are killers one of the one of the, the guys that I sparred after he's he told me he's like yo you beat my boy Tomlin, so it's like now that I realize that I'm 13 in the world, fighting on TV, it's like certain people what even if I don't know them they know who I am you know so they they watch yo they're like yo this guy yeah come in the ring dog they want they want to crack my head open right to say oh he's there that's where I belong you know what I'm saying so mm-hmm. now I gotta start putting motherfuckers in their place yep so again I made that I made that mental switch. 
I made that I made that mental switch. I, I made that mental switch, made the adjustments, me and Chris had conversations, and we're training differently. And he, within this within the last week and a half, he's impressed. It's like I, I feel like I grew in a I, it, it's like the, the growth that I made in one week was almost like a year's time just from a mental switch. Mm-hmm. The way that the way that I'm punching, okay, I my attributes where I was a slick, elusive boxer. When people see me, they can say that. I promise you, come fight night, they're going to say Channon's an elusive power puncher. That's what they're going to say fight night. They're going to say he's a power puncher. I've developed, Chris and has awakened and developed things inside of me that I didn't even know what I have. All because of that one experience. All because that one experience that changed me so much. You know what I mean? That it's like, fight night, everyone's going to see. They're like, wow. This, they're gonna say, "Wow, did you see what? Did you see how he did that? Did you see what he, the punches he put together? Did you see how he pr- promised?" And it's like it don't matter because now I understand. Like I made the adjustments from being playing boxing to actually fucking doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. everyone in Canada, to in my opinion, they don't really they're playing, bro. And I said they're pro- prolonging the inevitable, dog. They're because pro- these guys out here are they do this daily. And they don't even got fights lined up and they're training like this. You know what I'm saying? Some of them only got fights lined up and they're training like this. It's like it's it's no joke. So I can't wait. December 2nd, I'm going to show the world again that Chan Thompson knows how to make adjustments, knows how to to be on the in the big stage, knows how to, you know what I mean, come forward. Me and my brother, Trevor, well, the ta- it's the Thompson time, you know what I mean? Believe me. We're making a mark. No, no doubt about that. Like when I, when I, like I used to, I was walking in top rank a little bit, like nervous. Now I'm walking there, like yo, like you know, what's in the fridge, dog? You know what I mean? What's in the fridge? What's in the fridge today? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in there for like doing what I want. You know what I'm saying? Hungry. Yeah. Give me the work now. So I feel real good. And me and my brother, he's gonna make a name for himself out here. When I went there the first day, they were calling me Trevor, everyone, because they, my brother was already had not work, and now I'm having not work. So it's like. Fighting on ESPN, people are definitely going to, me and my brother are definitely making noise. Definitely. You know what I mean? But let me ask you, now that you've had this experience, now that you had this experience, is it going to be difficult to come back to Canada and inspire these guys? Like, yo, I'm going to show them. You're going to show them what's up. Yeah. (laughs) Yo, I promise you. I promise you. Hey, I'm not going to lie to you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to say this because I was kind of. You know, I, I, I'm, I made a promise to myself to be a lot more honest in the things that please, I say. Please, please. Um, and I used to watch sparring at a lot of gyms in 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 on in Ontario. And okay, yeah. I, when I look at it, I'm like, 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 are, is this is this a sparring drill? Because it looks mm. like a sparring drill. Is this sparring? Because right. sparring, I see blood flying, nose not flying. Headgear flying, shit mm. talking, bang. So let's go back now. Let's forward back. Do you remember when they tried to make y'all what? No, they didn't try. When they made y'all mop the floor, the video I still got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say to you? I said, What the hell? Is this a gym? It's not a gym, bro. Oh, you supposed to teach a younger generation the grunt work that it takes to be yeah. a woman. You remember to when I said you? to see the sweat? Fast. That's what I, said. I said it don't make no that's Fast. Difference. That's the difference. Exactly. And that exactly. is the gross difference. Baby food, bro. Baby food. I'm telling you, baby food is like solid for what is really going on in Canada compared to the states. Baby food is too solid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm telling you, this this game is no. Because my brother was telling me, my brother was like, "Yo, Chan, bro, like, mill mil- fucks giving me because he he's." Been in Vegas a little bit longer than me. He's like, Chan, bro, I'm telling you. I me, mean, I was like, I was kind of being a little cocky, like, yeah, 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 you know, 13 in the world, bro. I'm gonna show his boys what's up, right? First day I went there, I kind of I was showed what's up, but then I have, like I said, I have it in me. I made the adjustments and I showed them what while going. But nonetheless, it's no joke. You know what I mean? Like, it's no joke, bro. That's why I said when I come back to Canada, I'm gonna come back on the show, I'm gonna spar. And I'm gonna come back on the show, I'm gonna say I showed. I'm just gonna tell you I showed. What's going on? And I show. No, we want to come to the sparring. We want to see that. Yeah, yeah, come. Yeah, come. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you guys know what what, what sparring what sparring I'm gonna have, yeah. and um, 
who I'm gonna spar and I'm gonna put the paint on. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna show you guys what the difference is. I'm 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 gonna bring that back. Even the conversation is what I love, Greg. Bro, Greg, when I'm listening to these sparring sessions in the States, like bro, I'm about to eat your food. Like I'm about to really hurt you. Like bro. cool and whatnot, but when we give you two those roles, I'm about to really hurt you. I'm really trying to make you. When I do say, yo, before you don't make it to your fight, they not lying. Like, no. who's when I'm sparring, you out, B. When I'm sparring, there's a man in the ring refing the sparring. <laughs> there's a guy in the ring refing the sparring. You know what I'm saying? That's how serious it is. He's like, yo, he, he and he's, like, I mean, it's, it's almost mentally, like, psychologically making me stronger because we get in the ring. That's why the first time it was, it, it shook me a little bit because I'm like, yo, is this a fight, bro? I get in the ring. He's, look, he tells me, show me my mouthpiece. He does the same checkup the ref does. Talks to me. He's like, all right, seconds out. Come in. And it's like, he's he's in there. I tie him up for two seconds. He's like, break, break, break. I'm like, bro, I, I can't let go of this motherfucker. He's like, show me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a wet t-shirt. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm like, yo, he's like, what do you think about it, though? Doesn't it make sense to prepare like that, though? Because that's what the fight's going to be like. A hundred percent, a hundred trillion percent. That's what I'm trying to tell you. These motherfuckers in Canada ain't ready for what's written. That's what I'm telling you. It's not boxing in Canada. It's not boxing. It's not. Yo, the, sa- the, the sound, yeah, that's, that's what I said, the sound. When I'm closing my eyes and I hear the punches on the back, I used to hear Mike Tyson talk about that, the sound of, of a punch on the bag. And I never really understood it until I started punching like that. In these last three days, the growth that I've made within myself, it's like just, just like Chris is a master. Chris is a master. It's like he tweaked something inside of me that it's like, yo, all of my hidden, if this was like, jobs, it's like yesterday, three days ago, I turned super sane. You know what I'm saying? Like the small, like the, the biggest change came out of me where I'm punching different. I'm punching. Everything's different. That, that good I know, work will do it to you, man. That good work will do it to you. That good work will make you tighten your shit up. It's yo, either you, you have, tighten up or get knocked the fuck out. It's, yo, like, it's, have, it's either you tighten that shit up or you, you want to hurt somebody, you better tighten that shit up. Right. It's, it's it's not a physical thing. It's a mental yeah. thing. You That's what I'm telling you. Swim. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Do you want? It's like yo. It's not here. It's like it's here. You know what I'm saying? It's not here. It's here. You know? It's not like you know what I mean? Like it's you, yeah. when they say tuck your yo, bro. Every this much will get you KO'd, bro. Ah, yeah. this much. And it's like you either gonna learn that ASAP, and that's what I love. That's what I have to give me and my brother credit. We're dogs. Me and my brother make the adjustment, and we don't. We're not afraid of the work. Cause I'm not the type of person. I know some guys in Canada that wouldn't want to bring their sparring gear to the gym because if they saw what was going on in there, you know what I'm saying? Like it's mm. it's scary, bro. It's like, do you really want to go back there? It's like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> how many times, yo, bro? Every day, every for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we've been at Tom Frank. We've been at Frank sparring, but like I said, I I'm not gonna let Chris. My the people who believe I'm gonna go to work. That's me. But I'm, I know a lot of guys in Canada that wouldn't want to go there to spar on sparring day because it's just like you. I don't give a fuck who you get with here. Everyone here will drink red, bro. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's not. It's not a. As your body, it's like fuck. Motherfuckers getting knocked out in boxing. You know what I'm saying like it's not a sport. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> These motherfuckers fight and kill, bro. Dudes take, it take, take serious, pride. Bro. Dudes take pride in embarrassing you, man. Yo, that's what they're looking for. And, and, and the, the U.S. is all about that shit talk. They should talk, man. What do you think? You got to be. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. well, you fighting every day, and then everybody can fight. So it's like it doesn't really help because you. Everybody. Just, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and you gonna fight somebody that fight? And he shit talking mad shit to you. When I say, boy, you talking major shit. I'm telling you right now. Yo, the weakest dude in there, right? The weakest dude in there would give every Canadian trouble. Work. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The weak, Work. he would be considered top tier, fifteen and oh. The guy who has the guy that I, I sparred, one guy, he wasn't. His record was like one and two and like two or something. Like that he 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 was like the one of the least guys in there. And we did nine rounds, right? My second sparring and. True, like I have to give myself credit because that day my shoulder was killing me, bro. So I wasn't having the best sparring. My right shoulder, I had to get like a massage and check it out. It's better now. So I was having a tough time through the sparring. But yo, if he came to Canada, and let's say he was under, let's say he got signed in a Canadian promotion, he would go easily 10 and 0 in Canada because, mm-hmm. bro, he was one of the easier guys there. 
and he was still giving me good work. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like in Canada, it's hard to find work even at that level. You know what I'm saying? In Canada, and he is the easiest guy there. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yo, the weak guys here, bro, will eat your food, bro. If you're not on your shit, you know what I'm saying? The weak guys, the guys that ain't even nobody's. Because being eighteen and old, other than me, yo. Just when you're bro. 18 and 0 in America, it's not 18 and 0 in Canada. 18 and 0 in Canada doesn't mean nothing. When you're 18 and 0 in America, bro, you're proven. You're I get proven. It. I say, saying? Greg, if you fight at 160 here in Canada, you really should be at 47. You should be 54. Yeah. Yeah, late smaller exactly. You be a world champion. Yep. You got to do that. Yeah, you got to do it. Go do. down. <laughs> Go down. <laughs> down, baby. Down. 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 down, bro. If you if you weigh in one sixty and you on fight 147. Fight, you are one sixty two. You're not fighting exactly. You're not funny. Go down, <laughs> man. Yeah. yeah. Down. Think about it. <laughs> I, I, I go up to, if I go up to 150 on a regular day and I'm fighting at 35, you not if you're fighting at 60, yo, you better be fucking coming from like 190, 200. Did you, did you hear Loma Jake <laughs> yeah. to Devin Haney? What are you at? You look like you're 165, 170. You make, big, 130, yeah. you make 135? <laughs> Shook him. Shook him. Shook telling these guys here, man. They're like, yo. Every chance I get, Greg, oh, no, you yeah. tell them every, like, listen, every we time. With promoters, with trainers, I don't give a damn. Y'all gonna get people decapitated, bro. You gotta get people knocked the fuck out. Yo, like, for real. Me, yo, it, I, it, to be honest, I'm coming to the States, okay? This is what, what, this is my advice to any, I'm not gonna lie. To be honest, uh, before I say what I'm gonna say, Chris Johnson was coach. In a Canada, and one of the greatest coaches in the world. That's he right. know how to do it. He knows how to apply. It. And, he's, and he's had multiple world champions. I'm just saying. Exactly. If you're willing to work hard, he he's the man for the job. That's why. I, that's why I don't have fear because I know I have every attribute and I know I have the heart. But I know what Chris is the mastermind who gives it to me to bring it execute in the ring, and I know I could do what he says. So without, if you do not have a guy like Chris in Canada. This is why I suggest to every promoter. This is what I would suggest to promoters in Canada. I would suggest don't build a promotion, right? Don't build a promotion company. Take three or four guys that you know that are good and invest in them. Send them to America to train. All that money they're wasting on promotion, take the few guys that you want to be champion and send them to America to train. And buy them a house in America, wherever they're staying, buy their food and, you know what I'm saying, invest in them to get the work in America and grow, pay a coach to train them, you know what I'm saying, in America and let them train there. You invest your four Canadians and you you have them like four months out of every like, you know, three months they're in America, they come back for a month, you go back for three months for camp, you know what I'm saying? I, that's what I would do, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Going through it and then, and then if you want to have your promotions out here, yo, they, they can fight out here, they can fight in Canada, I'm not saying that, they can fight in Canada. You know what I'm saying? You put them on shows, but yo, I would personally, if it was me, invest in fighters from Canada to go train over there to see, you know what I'm saying? To get the work over there. I Anybody that's staying over here, anyone that's staying over here is not a uh, salute to a box for money. <laughs> Met him at Bones Adams Gym in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Maybe must have been in May. But, but yeah, whoever, if what's, I don't know his name, box for money, but yeah. I'm just saying, I, w- I would invest for guys to come to the states. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 the yo, bro. Again, <laughs> can you play that thing for me, uh, Greg uh, Francis? Which one? The murder. The murder. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's, yeah, that's what I... it's the top rank gym right there. <laughs> Careful, bro. Murder. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's the what real deal out here, man? dog. <laughs> I'm in the belly of the beast, dog. I'm telling you, I'm cooking steak out of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. This is one of my favorites that a lot of people uh like underestimate. 
But yeah. Shane Mosley said Floyd Mayweather fights for money. You fucking dummy. I'm a prize fighter. That's what I'm supposed to fight for. A prize. Duh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got to fight for something you. right now. You're fighting for that respect, man. You're fighting for that, you. that position. You're fighting for the bag. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Bag mm-hmm. around the corner. Mm-hmm. As long as you mm-hmm. continue to knock these fools out along the way. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're doing, you, you, you're you going to be fighting for your life. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely going to be fighting for your life. No cat. Do you see what David Morrell just did to that dude? In his coma, man. Ain't no joke. Mm-mm. That's what I'm saying. Motherfuckers think they're training. You think you're training. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you, you, it's like you think, you're, you think you're winning. You're prolonging, bro. You're yeah. prolonging the inevitable, bro. Bro, I've literally seen sparring sessions I mean, here where they're like, Going through the motions, they're not fighting. Mm-hmm. Literally, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm telling you, I mean, I'm bringing that shit back, and I'm never letting go. Motherfuckers out here were telling me. They said, "Chan." They said, "Chan," because they saw me when I did when I did my work and I put that work in back when I went back. They said, "They just they, they said, you see that?" They said, "Don't let go of that." They said, "You see that dog that, that you let out on Friday and you showed everyone that, that you earned everyone's respect?" They said, "Don't ever let go of that." And I said, "I can't, bro." You know, I said, "I can't." Facts, because I'm just right. like, bro. It's like, my eyes are open, bro. It's like my eyes are open. There's no mist, and that's what's making me sharper too. There's no room for mistakes against these beasts. You know what I'm saying? There's no room. You gonna make a mistake? It's like, bro. Everyone's waiting to knock you out. They want to say, oh, they knocked out the the 13th. He's 13 in Canada. I knocked him out. He's fought on Showtime. I, I want his spot. Hey, don't you know forget. Don't forget. Yeah. Let me remind people in case y'all forget, because you know boxing is something I love, and I remember almost everything when it comes to boxing. Don't forget that when Anthony Joshua came here to New York to America, to, to, America, First to fight, time, bro. To fight First time. um against um what's my man? Mm-hmm. Miller. Nope, Jarrell Miller. Miller. He popped dirty. He got not, yeah, because it's, Andy Ruiz was, Andy Ruiz stepped in because his only got, fight in the US. Yeah, his yeah, only, yeah, only fight. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Don't because forget, there was rumors that he got knocked out by Joey DeWaco in sparring. Yeah, prior Joey DeWaco's record, it ain't nothing serious, but I guarantee nah. he got a lot of fights just because he's yeah. Anthony Joshua in sparring. Exactly. Dudes make me, money off stopping big name fighters. In in giving you, we're oh, this guy. Dillian yeah. White signed, signed Alan Babbage because of the work he gave him in sparring. Alan exactly. Babbage fight for the Bridgeweight World Title. Like that's how mm-hmm. you know. Like when you really yo, it's an opportunity. It, what? It's an opportunity. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like yo, I'm about to spar the champ. Bless. I'm about yeah. to spar. He, he, he's he's the top dog. Bless. Let me show where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is my opportunity. You know what I mean? It's a free gig, bro. I get to fuck him up if you get the chance to. You know? That's why you got to be the real deal. Yo, the, the, the at the top, the separations amongst fighters isn't far, bro. Isn't far. That's why it's like. That's why it's like, yo. Not only am I gonna show that I grew a lot in this training camp, mentally and physically, but in my everyday progress after this, everyone's gonna know. Like, this is a pivotal point for me. So, so yo, shit. Ever, ever since Chan's second training camp in Vegas, yo, he just turned the fuck up. He became different after. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be my. This is this is gonna be like a, a like a a big chapter in my story where it's like, yo. When he came back to Toronto, he was putting guys on blast. He he he, he was training like a monster. It's like because I see it, and I and th- to be brutally honest, <clears throat> I'm afraid, dog. That's the truth. I'm afraid of these motherfuckers, so I cannot let up. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, that's the truth. I'm. A, it's not all. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna beat them. I beat them. I'm, the fear of the reality is so strong, but I'm the type of person I will always face my fear. That it's it's. This is the adjustment that's necessary. Mm-hmm. If if my fear would overcome me, I would just I'm telling you, I wouldn't I would quit. But because I face my fears, I'd rather die facing my fears than walking around knowing that they exist. You know what I'm saying? So because I'm willing to face my fears, the adjustments become automatic. Yeah. When I so when, when my regiment, when I get back to Toronto, there's no room for nothing, bro. It's like I I truly see them. It's like it's like I could truly see the path is narrow. But I could see my way to become a world champion. And it's like, bro, it's sacrifice, discipline, grungy and grimy. You know what I'm saying? The work is grungy and grimy. And when I spar, it's like, yo, I'm going to show guys in Canada, whether they're 
I'm going to show them, I'm going to make them rethink whether they're ready or not, bro. Because I'm telling you, the, the work that I'm going to be giving out now, they're going to say, oh, fuck. Nah, we don't want that work. And if you don't want the work, then you already know what I'm going. You know you're not built for the path. Because that's what, those are the questions I was asking. You know? So, Greg, just so you know, mm -hmm. even, even Chen's language has changed. Everything has changed, man. Everything. I love, and I love it. I love it, man. It's the eh? here and see. Yeah, yeah, because again, yeah. we do. We're going to be here yeah. from the beginning of your career to the end of your career. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Yeah. Generation, mm -hmm. generation. 100%. After. Yeah, <laughs> That's 100%. We do. But like when you yeah. get into it and I, and I look at it, I'm I'm happy for you, man. I'm happy for you and I'm proud yeah. of you, man, for the growth that you have. That you, have, me. I mean, you continue to stay solid, and I, I respect. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I respect uh, what you're doing right now and your goals you're trying to achieve for your family. You know where you come from, know 100%. what you're saying. Um, and you know that nobody, if your situation growing up didn't defeat you, that nobody inside that ring should be able to defeat you, and that's exactly. something to take with you at all mm -hmm. times. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's absolutely. Okay. Take us back to the last fight when you won that IBA title in mm -hmm. Ma. Talk to us about the overall trip for yourself, the entire team, and then we're going to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. So in Panama, it was very interesting because, like, again, my fight before that was on Showtime, and the procedures to Showtime was, like, okay, like, world stage, you know? Like, the, the medicals, everything was so was so new to me. Like, how they were doing it, I could tell that it was so serious, you know? No one's going to die on the watch of Showtime, you know what I'm saying? Everyone, before you step in that ring, all the procedures were checked out. This guy was ready to fight. That's what they're making sure. So everything was long, signing this, signing that, make sure this is like that. Everything was good. But when I got to Panama, it was it was laid back again. I kind of felt like a university kid, like in Harvard, going to do an elementary test, school test, you know? And when I fought the guy, he was clever and this it taught me something different it taught me how fighting someone who knows how to work the ref because he was complaining a lot for every little thing to the point where the ref was like there was damn near it was almost an oral it was almost an oral presentation you know what i'm saying in the fight <laughs> i never been spoke to spoken to so much in the fight by the ref <laughs> by my opponent <laughs> that like it was actually messing with my head you know what i'm saying like in sparring in 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 the, in the fight because when I dropped him in the first round, he I, I finished him the second and fifth. But from when I dropped him, that's when he started to talk to the ref and talk to the ref and talk to the ref about every little thing. And the refs talked to me. At one point in the third round, I slipped him and touched him on his chin. And the ref stopped and talked to me because I put my elbow on him to push him off me. And the ref was talking to me. To When the ref was talking to me, the man was like literally about to fall on the floor if I blew on him. So And he's talking to me in Spanish where it's like he's trying to get me to understand what he's saying. It's like I thought he was going to pull out a dictionary at one point. But in my <laughs> mind, I'm just like, bro, like we're fighting, you know. So the man fell in the fifth round. So between the ref doing everything he could do to save him, in the fifth round, he fell through the ropes. As I'm, I'm like blessed. Bro. Like this, this clown is bothering me. I'm about to KO him while he's stuck between the ropes. I don't care. I'm going to touch him right now. As I'm about to, to just touch him while he's stuck in between the ropes, the ref jumps in the way. So the ref jumps in the way. Is looking at me, pushing me back. Naturally, when the ref jumps in the way, your his first reaction would be to come out from under the ropes. The man was laying in the ropes, waiting for the ref to like talk to him. So when the man, when the ref moved, I was like, uh, okay, and I just hit him in his stomach. And then everyone in the crowd was booing. So the ref at that point was like, bruh, I'm doing everything I could do for you to win. And the ref waved it off because he's just like, he's the guy don't want to fight, and the refs and the ref is helping him. So I felt like the ref was like, bruh. You're doing it's too much now. It's too much shenanigans. So right. the ref went off the fight, but the crowd was booing me, bro. Even when I won the belt, they were just like boos. So that was a different feeling. I was like, wow, you know, I'm like shit, because he was he was from Panama, and then right. he was trying to make it seem as if he wanted to fight more. But I'm like, he's just he's literally playing. He's being a clown, you know what I'm saying? He's working the crowd and the ref. So that was a um, felt weird against me. So even though winning the belt, it didn't really. It didn't really feel what I thought it was going to feel like until I started to come back. Because when I walked through the airport with it, people yeah. were asking to take pictures. And when I pulled up to Toronto, my, my boy picked me up and he was like, oh, shit. You know, like, so when I started to get back to Canada, I'm like, oh, snap. Like, OK, this is the feeling that I was looking for. But in Panama, it just felt a little off because the fight was so weird that it just I didn't feel super, super like content with how the fight went down because like I said, I thought it felt like an oral presentation. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it was weird, but nonetheless, you know, my team was on point. 
we were on point as always, sharp as always, stayed, stayed calm and composed. I felt like uh I felt like I said technically I was I, I did the right things and I I knew what I needed to do differently to get to where I'm at now and I made those adjustments and I feel great I felt great about it, you know what I mean? Um well, how was it for the team? So your brother and everybody that went down that competed uh Well my brother laid laid him out, damn near killed this guy, you know. So, like, in just in the third round, one, as soon as he touched him, like, boom, right hand, put him to sleep. And Jack had a, Jack had a, I think, a, was having more of a, uh, he, he, he ended up losing his fight. I think he could have made it a lot easier than, than, I think he could have been a lot easier, you know, for him to beat that, to beat that guy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I think going through it, I don't know what was going on in, in him mentally, and I don't know exactly what he was feeling. And I think he he I think he got dropped. Well, he slipped, but they ruled it as a knockdown. So I think the fact that he felt like he got knocked down, maybe he felt like he was behind because he started boxing in a way that's not really unlike his style. He's kind of looking more for the KO, which so I don't know where he was in his mind. And I think he said that he had gotten tired in the third round. So I think it was a I more of a mental because this is the second or third time. Mm -hmm. that I said I've looked at Jack and he looked weight drained on weighing day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super weight drained. And mm -hmm. like, like is he having trouble making well, I know it's not your question to answer, but it's yeah. like he's making having trouble making the weight or yeah. he's taking too long to take off I, two drop it, pounds. Yeah. You know, he dropped yeah, it as close it's, to it's, it. it's possible because I think he had a little bit to I know he knows himself so he knows what he could do the day before mm. to me I felt like uh like I, I just saying and out thinking about it it was probably a lot to do the day before even though he was able to do it without a problem um because me normally like I'll only lose I'll have to when I if we show up the day before the weigh-in I'll have to drop three pounds and three pounds I can do that in 30 minutes you know what I'm saying like with a light it's nothing to do three pounds you know that and that's and that's me going there comfortably like it's like i never had an issue struggle only in colombia but outside of that i never had a, str a struggle making weight to do it you know and colombia would do it back to back that's why it was it was it was trouble you know right. but um i think like i said i think prior to the fight maybe just some things were going in his mind mentally and then going into the fight i think uh some things were going mentally and i think during the fight him, him, maybe him getting touched and just certain things were just going. I think it was more of a mental thing that caused him to to have a blockage in his performance. You know, more than anything else. I hear that, man. Um, yeah, it's good to know. But I'm glad everybody, you know, came on, did what they had to do, and you know, what I'm saying, Hell yeah. Now, uh, moving on to bigger and better things. Sid from the UK said, "Awesome. Uh, keep discipline and keep going back. Um, go to different gyms and maybe train with Bozy Ennis too." Americans like to use foreigners as dog food. Don't feed the beast. Instead, become a monster. I definitely became the monster. So thank you for that, brother. Definitely. So yeah, we definitely look forward to um, you know, when this fight is taking place. Week after next week, we're gonna catch up back with you and see how you know Absolutely. coming down closer to the camp. Um, obviously the goal is always to you know be at the same location you are. We're still working towards that, man. No time. Absolutely. If nothing happens before the time and later will always be greatest. I know it'll be going to be big things, you know, maybe the world title shot, you know what I'm saying? We have to pop out, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and do what we got to do for my yeah. guy, Greg, you feel what I mean? Yeah, for 100%, sure. 100%. 100%. Happen, man. Well, we definitely appreciate you always coming, you know what I'm saying? And sharing some time with us and, and, and doing. Thank you guys for having me. Both of you. Thank Greg, you. talk to, talk to Shane, man. You know, I'm a big mouth. Yeah, man. But yo, appreciate you coming back on the show, man. And um, love your growth, man. Love where you're at right now mm -hmm. in your career. Um, you yeah, done. just just to yeah. touch on that quickly is like yeah. you know, as a fighter, to be honest, <clears throat> that's um one of my 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 only concern in the sport of boxing is to grow, and mm -hmm. is to know that I when I look at myself because I said I'm a I'm a big critic, and I know what I know what excellent looks like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So. As long as I see that I'm the changes inside myself mentally, physically, and spiritually, of course, are being made to overcome the next hurdles that are, that are coming in my life, then I'm always happy with what I'm doing. Because as a fighter, if you do not see the growth and honest with yourself, then to me, that's very scary. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, man, I can't wait. <laughs>